It's not abuse if he hits you back. He's not an abusive man if he hits you back. I know that this is something that people will not like. Maybe I'll lose subscribers, but there has to be a reality check made here. And as women, this lesson has to be learned. As young girls, you need to learn this so you can save your life later on. Because they're women who are violent and abusive. Young girls that's being violent and abusive to young boys, to their boyfriends. They're women who are being abusive to men, to their husbands, their boyfriends. And that's it. You know, you're just beating up on him, scratching him, punching him, throwing things at him and nothing is happening. And the minute that man hits you back or even holds your hand to try to stop you or may push you out of his way to keep you from attacking him, you're crying abuse. And it's time to stop that. That is a manipulating thing that women love to do that some women, not all, do. You're a brute beast. You're wild. You have no control over your emotions, your anger, you're rude, you're disrespectful, you're nasty, and you're wild. And what you do is not only are you verbally abusive, you're physically abusive. This man has scratches and scars and has cuts and maybe puncher wounds from you in the past and bite marks and burns. And some of you maybe even shot at him before or getting to that point. And you think that he's still supposed to be a man and not do anything to you. Well, it is in human nature to do what they call fight or flight. When we're being attacked, when we're in danger, our adrenaline gets going and we're in a position to run or to defend ourselves. And one thing a man should never have to do is to use his strength that he has to protect and to provide and to defend himself, to be using it against someone that he should be protecting because you are changing and morphing into some sort of wild animal. The Bible talks about brute bees. That's you. Ravenous wolves. That's you. We're living in a society where women, you know, a lot of them are calling equality and feminist and all of this stuff, but you don't want equal accountability. A lot of feminists like to run their mouths and say things and speak to men in your kind of way. But if the man or a male speak to them in that same tone and say the same thing to them, they're going to buckle and they're going to run out and get all the women from the pride lands that's going to come and they're all upset and they're going to surround and they're going to scream to the mountaintops about sexism and racism. And, and, and you spoke to that man with disrespect. Respect is give and take. Let me tell you something about feminism. I've done a video about it. I believe when it first came out, this is just me. This is what I believe, that there were good intentions for it. Women were not being treated well. They were not being given equal pay. They have the exact same qualifications. They did not have a right to vote. Okay, this is good. This is great. Okay? Um, you even read in the Bible that there were some sisters whose father passed away. They didn't have husbands. And I believe they didn't have children. And there was a discussion on them getting the inheritance of their father. And so these women went and spoke before the princes among the children of Israel. And they went before Moses and spoke about this cause. They did not think that they should not be given their father's, their father's inheritance. And so Moses went before God and prayed about it. And when he went before God, the Lord said, let them have their lands. And it became a rule. The Bible is not about women being abused. And at the same time, it's not telling you you're supposed to have your heel on the neck of men. There should be equal respect and consideration for one another. So as I was saying, I believe feminism in the beginning had its good intentions. But it's getting crazy now. It's filled with a lot of angry, bitter women who's on a vendetta. And I say that as a woman. They, they bleed just, just 
they are so bitter and so rude and so disrespectful a lot of them not all and you're wondering who hurt you girl because you are now taking it out on the world you went and got yourself some education you went and got yourself some clout and now you're coming out here and you're trying to just impale every man on the planet the ultimate the ultimate purpose of a lot of feminist movements these days is to annihilate men, to silence them, and to do the very thing to them that they were fighting against. They want them to be silent. They want them to be abused. They want them to be in a position of subservience. It's abusive and it's not okay. And so with that, let's go to this. You want to put your hands on men but then when they hit you, you're calling women, you're calling femininity. You're calling, oh, I'm a girl. Act like one. You're saying you're a woman, but then you're acting like an old zebra out in the plains. And I don't know zebra. Zebras don't attack people. So you're below a zebra. It is not abuse if he hits you back. You hit him first. It is not abuse if you are attacking him. The difference is a lot of times men, when you're hitting them and you're attacking them, there's so many things that's going on in their mind. They're dealing with the pain and the attack. They're dealing with what you're doing. And in their minds, they have to make so many decisions in that split second. Fight or flight, okay? He feels his anger, his rage, his concern, but he's just thinking about you. I can't hit her back. I can't hit her back. He knows he can hurt you, so he's not doing it. Let me try to block her. But then now you take it to the next level, and you go up to the next level of violence because you're mad and you can't. He tries to stop you, and he's stronger than you, so you get something to attack him with. And then the minute that man pushes you out of those way, which is going to, you're going to go flying, or he holds you to stop you, he's abusive, and you run and call the police on him. And there's a, an assumption that's made that because he's a man and you're a woman, he's going to go to jail because he shouldn't have touched you. He was supposed to stand there and let you hit him and let you attack him and let him scratch you up. I'm sorry, let him hit you. No, he was supposed to let you hit him and let you attack him and you scratch his face and you bite him and you spit on him. You throw objects at him, right? In what world? In what world? From a time a child is little, they're told don't hit, don't do that. So even at an at a a toddler is taught not to hit. Are you saying that you are less than a toddler? If you go out there and you hit somebody right now, you're going to jail. If you hit a police officer, even if you use uh, abusive language, you can go to jail for that. If you go out there and you hit a police officer, you're going to get in trouble. If you go out there and hit somebody, you're going to get in trouble. And so it's the same thing. If you hit a person, whether they're male or female, they're in a position where they are supposed to now def either remove themselves from you or defend themselves. And that's not going to be different because he's a man. You want to buck up and be a man that expect to get connected and expect to get punched in your stomach like you're a dude. If you want to be respected and you want to be treated like a woman, then you conduct yourself as such. I'm not saying that it's right for a man to beat you. I'm not saying that it's even a good idea for a man. I'm not telling men, oh, go ahead and just deck her and attack her. That's not what I'm saying. Understand that. I am not giving man the permission to go now and, oh, she hit you, go ahead and hit her back. I am not telling you that because I'm about to get to that in a second. But what I am saying to you ladies that's doing it and you've been getting away, you're playing a dangerous game. And it's hypocritical. You can't do things like that and you still want to be treated like a lady when you're acting like an animal. There's a show that used to come on or maybe still do. Maybe still comes on. It's called When Animals Attack. That's you right there. Because only animals should be attacking. I 
A lot of times there is no threat. You're just angry. You're out of control. You have no control over your mouth. You have no control over your behavior because a lot of you guys, you grew up in an environment that was wild and volatile and abusive. You did not learn to deal with things properly. You were just left to run the planes and now you get into a relationship and nine times out of 10, you're not gonna find or look for a man that's gonna knock your head off. You're looking for a man that you can control. That's the thing with abusive people, whether it's a man or a woman, y'all don't look for somebody that's just as crazy as you are and will cut off your whole head you're gonna look for someone who's kind and who's you guys look for that you're meticulous in that you want a nice man a godly man even and you will destroy and abuse him you'll destroy and abuse that nice young boy his parents don't even know that you you hitting him. And you'll abuse him because of what happened to you when you were little and because this happened and that happened. Beware, young gentlemen, of these girls that's telling you about all these problems they have. Get away from them. You know, people can have problems and they can want to get better, but these kinds, they want to be forever victims. You know, they have a store called for Forever 21. These type of girls want to be forever victims. They're going to tell you about what happened and this happened and that happened and this happened and that happened. And while valid, that does not give her a right to abuse you. And you're feeling sorry for her because she was abused. She was abused. Now you're going to become abused. It is not abuse if he hits you back. Keep your hands to yourself. It's gonna lead you down a path of destruction. And men, when you're being abused, report her. Put her behind in jail. Every time, call the cops, every time. But there shouldn't be an every time because that's what it's, I'm boiling, bringing this down to. Men and women, I'm gonna say this. Sometimes you could be in a situation where you're with a person that's not good for you. You keep hanging around them. And I want you to know that when you remain in relationships with someone who's not good for you, they may not even be physically abusing you, but they could be emotionally, they could be verbally, they can neglect you, they can be repeated offenders in different areas of the relationship, and you keep staying with them. What is going to happen is your hurt can become anger, and your anger can make you become either suicidal, homicidal, violent towards them, violent towards other people, which will be displacement because you feel feeling anger and hurt. You take it out on other people. And I believe I already said suicide. You become a problem because you won't, you fail to realize that being with this person is not going to get you anywhere. So there is a responsibility that you have as men and women because there could be instances let's talk about that instances where you are normally calm you're normally you don't even you try to just keep the peace and this person continues to provoke you and provoke you and provoke you and taunt you and do things and do things and do things and do things, and do things until finally that hurt erupts into an anger that can cause you to get volatile so you know you may break things around the house or you may be angry at that man and you hit him out of anger. He may have been cheating on you. You may have been lying to you. You may have been doing certain things. It can happen. Where you are not normally a violent person, but you're with a person that hurts you so much. You cry and you scream in your rage and you may run up to him and hit him or toss things. This can happen. But let me tell you, even that holds consequences. You may get upset with her and you may, she's been doing things and you just react. But even that brings consequences because the bottom line is there's always a choice. Before you get to this place of anger where you lash out and you're screaming and you're breaking things or you're hitting the person, you've had enough time to see that this person is a liar, a cheater, an abuser, they're indifferent, they're passive aggressive, they taunt you, they disrespect you. You cannot allow that stuff to build up. So you have to get away from this person because eventually you're going to do something you're going to regret. 
or being in a place that you have to defend yourself, but now you have to go before the court of law to prove that you are only defending yourself. And it could be your word against hers, or now they're burying him or her because of something you did in a moment. And now you're trying to prove your innocence. And even if there you are proven innocent, your reputation, your name, your life has changed because there are always going to be people who believe that you are an abuser or a murderer. So that's why it's important that when you're faced with this stuff, you leave now. Some of you all understand you may not have the power right now to do it, but start looking and praying and asking God to give you a way out. If you can't escape, you don't have any money, you don't have this, you don't have that, and you're below 24 years old, go find a military recruiting station, join the military, get your job, get up out of Dodge, you'll be gone, you have your own money, you have a career, you can choose to stay for 20 years or just do three years, save up enough money to get started somewhere else. Take a contract job. You don't have to join the military. Go look for contract jobs if you can do that. Some of you just need to move back home, go back home. And others, you got to pray and wait a little bit and ask God to help you. And he will show you how to get out of that situation. But you are responsible for yourself. That abusive person wasn't hitting you from the beginning. They know how to control themselves. They got more they've got more comfortable with you when they gave you that first hit and you stayed. That was consent. I don't care what their background is. Let me get back to the abusive woman. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what you went through. You do not have the right to beat up on that man. I don't care what happened to you when you were a little girl. You do not have a right. Not that what happened to you as a child is not valid, but it that is not a reason to beat up anybody. And if you keep on and keep on, keep on doing this, you're going to reach a place where you're going to bump into a kind of man that you're going to think is quiet or you're going to try to do something again to the person you've always been hitting on and he will do something and you'll find yourself dead. And being killed in the midst of anger of an angry outburst and someone deciding to just take you out, I don't know when you would have had time to ask the Lord to forgive you. So where do you go from there? Being violent, the children are afraid of you. The children are afraid for their father. They're afraid just in general for you or with anybody because you are an angry person. Anger leads to death. Anger leads to death, whether you do it. Because there are enough stories of women that was doing their usual angry outbursts again and they went too far and killed someone. Or they're doing their usual angry outbursts again and they end up getting killed by somebody. They're getting ready to speak and say the mean things they normally say to their, to their husband, their boyfriend, whatever that they normally do and get away with. And he snaps and kills you. It is not abuse if he hits you back. You hear me? It is not abuse if he hits you back. He's defending himself against a wild beast and in the heat of moments and attacks it's amazing how women would want that man to be in control while you are not how can he remain in control when you continue to come at him how can he maintain any sort of control and have peace when you can attack him for no reason so he's expected to control himself, enjoy your pain, figure out how to defend himself without touching you and upsetting you. Remember that you're a woman while you're straight up acting like a banshee from hell. 
And I'm sick and I'm tired of our judicial system just giving women a pat on the wrist. And we got to remember, you a woman. And we got to remember, you had a bad childhood. I'm here to tell you there's plenty of people who've had bad childhood worse than you that's not going around hitting people. You're making that choice. You're choosing to stay and weaponize your pain and destroy other people. You have no right to be displaying your anger on other people. You are not a good person doing that. And you're destroying destroying other people and what do they do with animals that go around just biting people and attacking people they get put down but that's not what's going to happen with you we can't put you down but you in danger of being put down somebody going to get tired of you Understand that anger is a spirit that comes from rejection and hurt and pain and things like that. And if you just inter you decide to weaponize it, whatever, it's going to lead you to a path of destruction. Everything that you're doing now, all the men that you beat up, all these years you've been doing all these different things from you a little girl. And you just, everybody know you as the fighter or whatever they may know you as or, oh, this is how she is. It's leading you to that one. At the very least, if you never run into that one, let's talk about that one first. It's going to lead you to that person that's not going to have it. You're going to think it's going to be business as usual, but it won't be. It'll be your final moments. I saw a video maybe two or three months ago of this girl. She was in New York and she was in the bodega. It's like a little corner store. You go in there to get whatever you need. And she, this, I don't know, she ends up arguing with this guy. You see the guy trying to leave and she's blocking him and getting in his face. You see her friends pulling her, pulling her, pulling her. And she's getting in his face and she's just blah, blah, blah. And a couple seconds after that, I think he goes outside eventually. And she goes out eventually. And that man shoots her and kills her on the spot. A woman saw this on Facebook. Haven't been on Facebook for about two or so years now. But the girl went out, came back, and allegedly was talking smack to her boyfriend about how she was out with another man. And that man got some sort of object and chopped off half of her head. You saw her laying in this cute outfit. Now, I personally do not look in, like looking at things like that. But it was just in my feed. I was mad. I believe I blocked the person that sent me that. But I never forgot it. And I believe I, I just told a story about of a woman who was with a man. She didn't want to be with him anymore, but they were still living in the same house for some reason at that time. But she wanted to leave him. She was seeing other people. Well, she was seeing another man. She had told him that, all this good stuff. He was, of course, doing everything that's power to try to get her back, which, of course, is going to be annoying to her because she doesn't want to be with him anymore. So he's needy. He's this. He's that. She's saying all this stuff, but he just wants his marriage to work. And... I guess he started to record her conversations. He put a tape recorder in the house. He started questioning everything she's doing. He's starting to check everything, things that happen when someone realizes their, their marriage is not working and they're, they're cheating or seeing someone else. Well, she kept on and she was laughing and he was hearing how they're laughing at him as he's listening to the recordings and she's talking down about him and she's doing all these different things. She's bragging about how she hit him and he didn't do anything. And he's so soft and he's so this and he's so that. Well, it came to a head one day. She's getting ready to go out to go meet her. She was telling him that she was going to go out somewhere with her friends. But because he had a recording device, he was able, he knew that she was going to spend the weekend with this man. And so he's saying to her, I can't believe that you're actually going to go and see this man and leave me here. And she basically, in a nutshell, allegedly, according to the recording, said, yes, I'm seeing someone else deal with him, closes the door in his face. Well, eventually he busts the door in, starts pounding on her, beating her up, punching her, throw her down, goes down to the kitchen. All this is being recorded. His footsteps downstairs, his footsteps are come up upstairs. He approaches her with a huge kitchen knife stabs her to death well what's happened well there's no history of her being constantly abusive to him but according to what was recorded 
She had been talking down to him. She had been emotionally abusive to him. She was telling him she's seen someone else. Yes, I'm with another man. She was packing uh, packing an outfit he had bought for her to wear the weekend with the other guy. She didn't know that he was recording all these different things. She had hit him before. She had thrown something at him before and she was laughing and bragging to her friends about it and saying he's soft and everything that he's not. So what eventually happened? All this stuff compounds, right? And he explodes and he overkills her. And not only does he stab her to death, he does it in front of their child, their five-year-old son. In a rage. Changes his clothes, cleans up, takes his son next door, asks the neighbor if the neighbor could watch him. He goes back into the house, puts her in the bathtub and let her bleed out and die in the tub. Why am I telling you guys these things? Because it's a reality. People will snap. People say, oh, well, she just hit him one time. It's not that. Not only that, there's words, 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 words. And that lasts longer. If you hit somebody, they may heal. The black and blue goes away. But words last forever. Where does the word go? Is there a cloud that we can send the words that's been spoken? No. Stop putting your hands on men and get yourself in counseling and learn to deal with your anger. No, it's not going to help you to go to the places where you can break bottles and throw things. Because what happens when it's closed one day and you're angry? What are you going to do? I understand the concept behind it. It seems like a good idea, but it's not helping you really. I mean, you may throw off some stress, so it might help you, but... Is it helping you to control your anger or now you feel better because you've expended it? Well, you have. So maybe there's some purpose in it, but at the same time, what happened when it's closed? What are you going to do? You still have to learn how to control your anger to find out the seed of rejection and hurt and the abuse you went through. You think of how you were screaming and how you were crying when you, when you were experiencing that at the hands of someone else. Why do you think it's okay to do it? Why should a man have to be a man and think about you and think about you as a woman when you are not seeing him as a human, as a person worthy of respect and you're not respecting yourself and you're stepping out of not even being a man or woman, but you're moving into becoming a beast. You are not a lady when you act like that. You have become something else. You're a brute beast. That's what the Bible says. You're a brute beast. It is, and some of y'all say you're Christians. Some of you say you go to church. You don't whooped on your husband, whooped on, them broke up some things and you're in the church singing on the praise team or on the choir or trying to help people's children in children's church and you're doing things like that or you're mad about something and your husband know, your kids know that's about to be on and popping because they are so triggered by you. They know your cues and know that when you're mad and oh my God, they're hoping somebody asks to come over because they don't want to witness what's next. It's time to stop it. Pray and ask the Lord to heal you. And you go through this process, get yourself in some counseling into anger management because it's going to cost you your soul in the end. It's going to cost you your life. You traumatize your children when they witness you doing that. You trigger your, your husband, your whoever is in a relationship with you. You're so violent that if you just lift your hand and scratch your head, they, they move back from you because they're so used to being hit. And then women love to run with this foolishness. You do something wrong. You want equality, but you don't want equal accountability. You want to be equal to men, but you don't want equal accountability. You want to hit a man and do whatever you want to do. And then go start crying like a little crybaby and playing that, oh, I'm so tender role. You are not tender. You are a beast. The devil is using you. And it's not because you don't have a choice, because you choose it. 
You want to feel sorry for yourself. You want to hold on to the bitterness and the hurt and the pain of things that's happened to you. You think this world owes you something. We don't owe you anything. There are people that's going through things. There's people that's watched their children and family get massacred. There are people who's hiding. There are people who watch people being chopped to death in front of them. And they have not put their hands on another person. So you better come up with something else. Sit yourself down and evaluate yourself as to why you're behaving this way. Because you are not a victim and you're not going to keep victimizing men and victimizing people because you're a girl and you're a woman you're not either one you're not behaving yourself as a human being you're behaving yourself as somebody that needs to be caged to be put in prison to be put away from other people you're behaving as if someone you're someone that should have a millstone and dropped in the bottom of the sea that the Bible talks about because you're offending people. God says it would be better if a millstone was taken around your neck and you were dropped in a rope was tied to a millstone, put around your neck and you was dropped in the bottom of the sea when you offend one of his little ones. And I'm not telling anybody to go drop themselves in the bottom of the ocean. I'm saying how pathetic that behavior is. It's not abuse if he hits you back. There are men who's gone to jail, been arrested, have a record because he simply defended himself. And she decided to play victim and play girl and play woman. And create a narrative to get him put in jail. Women, remove yourself from relationships where you find yourself getting violent. Some of you, you are not violent. Some of you, you're not this type of person. But you've had moments where you've broken things, you've screamed, you've yelled, you've attacked, you hit him because of things he was doing to you. But I want you to understand that he's only able to do those things because you're letting him. So no, you're not an abusive woman, but you're allowing, you're keeping yourself in a situation where your pain and your hurt and your rejection is exacerbated with a man who may go out all day and come in, been out with someone else and laugh in your face and say things to you and irritate you. There are such in individuals I know. There are such women who you're trying to be a peaceful man and she, she goads you and she says things and she says hurtful things to you and she compares you and she, she says things and tell you how a man was holding your child and you're not worthy. All these things that can make you want to get volatile or break things and then she runs and acts like she doesn't know what's going on because these are manipulating individuals. And so as adults, we have to make the choices to say, I got to get out of here. The first sign you see yourself getting out of character or you're thinking crazy or you're doing things breaking things or you attack this person out of anger you've got to go or you're thinking about it leave before that becomes a reality leave before your life is ruined let that person continue on that conveyor belt of destruction that they're on because they have to get to a place to repent before god learn what's going on with them take responsibilities for their actions do the soul searching that they need to do so they can grow and they can mature Otherwise, you're going to keep them in your life. They're going to be a ticking time bomb. They're going to either end up killing you, hurting you, or you're going to end up doing that to them. Keep your hands to yourself, ladies. Teach your daughters to do the same. It's not okay your daughters are beating up her brothers, hitting your sons, and you're letting her abuse your sons and you're telling them that's your sister you're not telling her about herself you're not telling her how she needs to keep her hands to herself you're not teaching her to be respectful to her brothers and vice versa you just have her walking around hitting and smacking them they can't do anything if they try to defend themselves you're gonna jump in it's okay for them to be abused huh but you're setting her up to get her hands cut off by a crazy person, probably some boy somewhere who wants and wish somebody would hit him. Don't set your daughters up for failure. And don't set yourself up for failure. This message needs to be told. 
Yes, I can tell you that Jesus loves you and he's going to forgive you for your sins. He does love you, but you need to know the truth about yourself. And these individuals are souls. You have no right to go around abusing souls, abusing who God has put on this earth, regardless of what you think about them. If he woke them up, he still cares about them. You do not have a right to be whipping anybody into shape. And I'm not angry at anybody. But I'm tired of the double standards and the hypocrisy. I hate double standards. I hate hypocrisy. I hate manipulation. I hate this behavior, whether it's a man or a woman doing it. But there's a lot of wicked and evil women raising up in these last days that's being used to destroy people and to create false narratives while being manipulating trying to jump back into the woman role, sweet role, tender role after you completely morphed into the beast that you had become to beat down this man and to lie and to do whatever and then morph into a helpless damsel in distress. That is demonic, it is unclean, and it is not of God. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people who go to church and who have Bibles that's doing this. It's not just someone who's not a Christian. It's not abuse if he hits you back. So keep your hands to yourself.